This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Okay, I mentioned uh, in one of the earlier chapters that when the um, financial accountant is preparing the financial statements at the end of the year, the four standard type of what we call adjustments that need making. Uh, we've dealt with one of them, the last set of lectures, accruals and prepayments. Um, in this lecture, or in fact there are going to be several lectures, because there's a lot to go through, we're going to deal with another of these adjustments, which is completely different, but something called depreciation. Uh, and as I just said, because there are several things we need to look at, I will break it down into um, several shorter lectures. And this one is very much um, an introductory, explaining um, what really it is we're talking about and what it is we need to cover for the exam in the later lectures. Uh, but first of all, and I hope you've got the, the free lecture notes printed out uh, for this chapter, but I'm not going to read it to you word by word. Uh, but first of all, you already know what we mean by non-current assets, which as you'll see is where depreciation is going to come in. Non-current assets, they appear on the statement of financial position, and these are assets that we intend to keep, uh, generally for more than a year. So you'll remember these things like cars, motor vehicles, uh, buildings, machines, that sort of thing. Uh, well, in fact, just as a bit of terminology, there are actually two types of non-current assets, what we call tangible and intangible. Now what tangible means, the word tangible means you can touch it, if you can touch something, you know, I can touch that pen, it's tangible, uh, can touch. Uh, and that's what most of the normal non-current assets are. You know, you can touch motor vehicles, Uh, you can touch uh, machines. So most of the uh, normal non-current assets, and all those are referred to in um, the earlier examples, uh, are what we call tangible non-current assets. Uh, however, there are ones that you can't touch, and we call them intangible. Uh, and I'll give you two examples. Um, but I don't go into great detail here because we'll deal with, say, more about these in a later chapter. Uh, but one is goodwill. Uh, suppose you were thinking of buying my business. You look at what assets I've got, car, building, machines, etc. And perhaps you think they're worth 50,000. Well, I'll probably expect you to pay a lot more than 50000 for my business because not only would you take over my cars, my machines, but if I'm a successful business making lots of profit, you know, and I've already got lots of customers lined up, you buy my business and you can start making profits immediately. You know, all the customers are already there. And so that's worth something. As a successful business, I'll expect you to pay me a lot more than 50000 Well, that extra you're paying for, the benefit of the fact I'm already successful and you're taking over all my customers, it's worth something. It's an asset. We call it goodwill. But you can't actually touch it. It's intangible. Uh, another example is patents. Now, uh, suppose I've invented a new uh, floor cleaner. I've got a patent, so nobody else is allowed to produce it, only me. Well, other companies might want to produce it, but if, they, if I allow them to, they'll have to pay me because I've got the patent. It's worth something. It's worth a lot of money, the, the fact that I'm the only person who's entitled to produce it because I invented it. And so again, um, you might pay me a lot of money for the right to produce. It's worth something, it's an asset. 
but it's not something you can actually touch. So that's the distinction. However, in this lecture, depreciation, I'm only concerned with tangible, you know, the normal non-current assets, your machines, your buildings, etc. Intangible, I'm not concerned at all for the rest of uh, this chapter. I've already said it's something we'll cover in a later chapter. Uh, so that's the first thing. Uh, the second thing, you uh, remember from, oh, I think it was chapter two, but whatever. In an earlier chapter, uh, I went through the distinction between capital expenditure and revenue expenditure. And if you remember, capital expenditure, that's when you're uh, buying non-current assets. And they appear on the statement of fin uh, financial position. So buy a machine, a non-current asset, it's capital expenditure, and it sits on the statement of financial position. Whereas revenue expenditure is where you're paying expenses and expenses appear on the statement of profit or loss. And so pay rent, pay telephone, pay electricity. You've not bought an asset, obviously. Uh, they're an expense for statement of profit or loss. However, the reason I mention it here, remember, it's non-current assets that we're concerned about for this lecture, non-tangible tangible non-current assets. Now, the reason I mention it here is there are occasions when you have to be very, very careful. Uh, for instance, I'll give you the rule after, but suppose I buy uh, a new machine, And I get the invoice, uh, but the invoice uh, is as follows. It has cost of machine, uh, 10,000. On the same invoice is uh, a charge for delivery. That seems to be a bit of excessive, but still a thousand. Um, installation, uh, whew, 2,000, uh, and perhaps um, a service contract, um, you know, you can, instead of having to, if it breaks down, keep having to pay repairs, maybe I pay, I'm going to pay a fixed charge a year uh, for, to cover any repairs. So uh, a warranty for one year, uh, another thousand. And so that warranty, a service contract, you know, every year I'm going to pay them a thousand, but it'll mean they do the repairs then free of charge. And so the total bill, 10, 11, 12, 13, the bill is 14,000. Uh, well, we've got to be careful because although we've bought a new machine, and a new machine is a non-current asset, we have to make sure that we check the bill and decide how much of that is what we call capital expenditure, really is the cost of the machine, and is any of uh, that total what we call revenue expenditure, uh, what you might call a running cost of the machine. And the rule is that the amount you show as a non-current asset is the cost of getting the machine in my building working. How much is it costing me to actually get the machine in my building ready to work? Obviously, the machine itself, 10,000. Now, delivery. 
I'm going to have to pay that to get the machine in my building and working. Installation, again, I've got the machine in the building, but it's not going to be working until the, um, the engineers have installed it. However, this warranty is something different. Even if I hadn't paid for this one year service contract, at that stage, the machine is installed and it's working. And I could stop there. I could have not bought this warranty and I'll pay repairs as and when it breaks down. But paying for any repairs is a, a, an expense of using the machine. It's a revenue expense. And similarly, the warranty. This is something I'll pay every year. Uh, it wasn't necessary to get the machine actually working. It's, a, it's like paying repairs. It's a running cost. It's a revenue expense. And so the first three have been the capital expenditure. Uh, a total error of, what, 13,000? And that would appear on the Statement of Financial Position. However, the warranty, this wasn't a cost of getting the machine to work in the first place. Uh, this would be classed as revenue expenditure and would appear on the Statement of Profit or Loss. So I hope I've made the point. In most uh, questions, that's not a problem. You buy a machine, 10,000, finished. But if you ever are asked anything like that, you're given the invoice, and it's made up of several things. Just remember the capital expenditure on the statement of uh, financial position, and the costs involved in actually getting it in the building ready to actually work. Any costs like that warranty uh, were not necessary to get it to work. It is an expense, but it's a revenue expense on the statement of profit or loss. All right, finally, for this, as I said, sort of introductory lecture, let me explain basically what we mean by depreciation, what it is. Just suppose I tell you we buy a car for 20,000. Now, uh, when we did the earlier lectures, where I avoided the problem we're coming to, we just said, OK, the car is a non-current asset. It appears on the statement of financial position as 20,000. But the trouble is, although it originally cost me 20,000, clearly, year by year, as I, what you might call, use up the car, it's not really going to carry on being worth 20,000. Suppose I told you that I expect it will last five years. Now we can discuss later why on earth I might say five years, why might I not say ten years? For the moment I don't care. I expect it to last five years. Then I'll say, well, effectively, I'm paying 20,000. If it's lasting five years, I could argue that every year, you know, at the end of five years, it's not worth anything. So every year I'm sort of using up a bit of the machine, uh, a bit of the car. That each year it's costing me to use it 20,000 over five years. In a sense, it's costing me 4,000 per year to use that car. I pay 20,000, in five years time, it'll be worth nothing. It's costing me 4,000 a year. And we call that the depreciation. And what we'll do is two things. At the end of the first year, on the statement of financial position, 
We will show the non-current asset, the car. And okay, it cost me 20,000, but I'll say, well, I've effectively used up a year's worth of that car. And I've already said it's costing me 4,000 a year to use it. And so I'll actually show it as only worth 16,000. It's not worth 20,000 anymore. I've had it for a year. I'll show it as worth 16. And also on the statement of profit or loss as an expense. I'll say, well, I've been using this car for a year. I'll show you where it came from. It's costing me 4,000 each year to use it. And so under my expenses. I'll have depreciation, 4,000. As you'll see later, this is only introductory, but uh, with all our other expenses, you know, we have all our normal expenses, rent, telephone, electricity, we'll have this depreciation, the cost of using the car for a year. And assuming I've still got the car, then at the end of the second year, Statement of financial position, non-current asset, fine, we've still got the car. But again, although it originally cost me 20,000, I'll say, well, we've now used it for two years. I've used up two years. It's costing 4,000 a year. And two years at 4,000, I've used up 8,000 of the car. And so we'll reduce its value again. We'll only show it at the end of the second year as being worth 12,000. Which I think is fair enough, as I use up the car. It's silly to keep showing it at the original cost of 20. Each year, I'll reduce its value. And so how much does it cost doing that in the second year? Again, under the heading expenses, depreciation. Last year, I said it cost me 4,000, brought the value down to 16. A second year, reduce it from 16 down to 12, another 4,000. It's cost me another 4,000 in the second year. Now, I'll go through the whole thing in full in the later lectures and the double entries. That's really what depreciation is. Every year we have an expense as we use up the car or use up the machine. And every year, we'll reduce the value on the balance sheet, uh, the statement of financial position. Every year, we reduce its value, 16 down to 12. And next year, it would go down to 8,000 and so on. So that's basically what's happening. In fact, we've more involved because, as you'll see, there are different ways two different ways you need to be aware of, of calculating the depreciation here, this 4,000. And of course, there's the debits, credits, and what happens when we eventually sell the car and so on. Uh, but that was just an introduction to what depreciation is. One last thing here though, which I must, must stress, which is commonly asked in exams, is that the reason we're doing this is never ever to try and show a true value for the asset. You know, that car, if you buy a car for 20,000, fine. After a year, it's gonna be worth less, obviously. But it would be an absolute miracle if it was worth exactly 16,000. And after two years, exactly 12, and that, I say that almost impossible to be the case. The reason it's never to try and show a true value that's not why we do it. The reason is this. Well, listen carefully, it won't take me a second. 
well, it will, but not very long. Electricity is an expense. It's a cost of running the business. And electricity is an expense on the statement of profit and loss. No problem. Well, so's a car. If I need a car for the business, it is a cost of running the business. You know, what's the difference? The difference is, of course, electricity. We pay electricity each year. <coughs> and each, ooh, each year we've got the expense. The car, it is a cost of running my business. I need the car. But I'm not going to be spending money every year. I spend 20000 this year. And I'm not going to spend any more uh, for another five years. Then I'll spend another twenty. And it would look rather stupid to show an expense in the profit, the extent of profit and loss of 20,000 this year, then no expense at all for the next four years, then another big expense, and the profit going up and down. It'd be ludicrous. And so, because it's an asset we're going to keep, it is costing me 20,000, but we spread the expense over its life. It's costing me 20, but since it's, I think it'll last five years, effectively, there's an expense of 4,000 a year using up the car. And that's the reason we do this. We spread the cost over the life of the asset. So I hope I made the point that I, I must repeat the first line. The figure that appears on the statement of financial position, we will reduce the value each year, but we never claim, the 16,000, the 12,000, we never claim that it's the true value. If we came to sell it, we may be able to sell it for more after two years, it may sell it for more than 12,000, maybe less than 12,000. I say again, it would be a miracle if it was worth exactly 12,000. We're spreading the expense over the life of the asset. All right, so I'll leave this lecture here. I hope that that's all clear. In the following lectures, we will deal with how we calculate depreciation. That was a simple way to illustrate but the ways we can calculate depreciation, uh, how we uh, account for it, how we do the debits, credits, uh, and what happens as and when we do come to sell the asset. But we'll cover all that in the later lectures.